Hi, my name is Anne Russell. I'm the birth mother of two children with FASD um, and I'm also the founder of the Russell Family Fetal Alcohol Disorders Association. Uh, this is the second presentation in a series at the moment of 11, but uh, I keep thinking of all um, the additional videos that I could be doing on various aspects of FASD, so it might increase over the next few months. Um, this particular presentation is on uh, fetal, it's an overview of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. These presentations are succinct um, grabs of information, um, basic but hopefully um, enough for people to understand each aspect of the condition. There's an awful lot of information about FASD on the internet and on YouTube but it's information that if you want a particular uh, parcel, it's often very difficult to find and you have to scroll through and what have you. So I'm hoping that this information is of, is of help because it's specifically about that issue that uh, is on the heading or the title of this um, video. This particular one, as I said, is about FASD, just an overview. Um, this, this condition um, is the, um, the highest um, non-genetic um, cause of intellectual disability in the Western world. Only 20 to 25 percent of those people with FASD will have an intellectual disability. So you can see that the 75 to 80 percent of people who don't have an intellectual disability um, are very difficult to identify. Uh, there's only a small percentage too of people who have the full syndrome and the full syndrome is where you can actually see the facial features. So that's the, um, the flat philtrum. This is the bow between the, the nose and the upper lip. So that's flat and longer than, than normal. Um, a thin upper lip, a flat mid face. Sometimes there's a, um, an underdeveloped chin. Um, a small head circumference, short palpebral fissures. That's of the eye slits are short. Um, small, um, sorry, uh, low set ears. So there are a number of facial features that occur when you're talking about the full syndrome, which is FAS, fetal alcohol syndrome. Now that condition is often um, talked about as though that's the only part of FASD. And in fact, it's a very, very small part. The facial features can only be caused during a period of pregnancy called gastrulation, and that often occurs around about the 19th and 20th day of pregnancy. So if alcohol is consumed at any other time during pregnancy, you won't get those facial features, but you will, if, if sufficient alcohol is consumed, have uh, a brain injury. And that's one of the most important things that I can stress, along with the fact that only a small number will have an intellectual disability, uh, because, because it's, it's a, it's, commonly misunderstood. So we have um, the facial features only occur uh, within a very short, small period of time. The rest of the time if alcohol is consumed, um, you will get a brain injury if enough alcohol is consumed, but you won't get those identifying features. Um, so how would you find out? How would you identify a person who doesn't have any obvious physical signs, but who has a brain injury? who doesn't have an intellectual disability, um, well, the, the, the way to do that would be to look at the person's history. Because we don't have any, well, diagnostic teams here in Australia, although we do have a diagnostic clinic in Sydney and Perth, um, it's, it's unlikely they'll be able to diagnose ARND, which is the condition that doesn't have the facial features alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorder. So if we don't have um, diagnostic teams um, around Australia, and if we don't have screening that can be done by uh, allied health people, how are we going to identify these people? Because we must identify them. By putting 
people with a brain injury into a mainstream program, we're setting them up for failure. It's it's a horrendous condition, and it and it results in in um, time after time of failing, not from not from the parents' perspective, but certainly from the individual's perspective. They try their hardest to do what's expected of them, but they, because of their um, brain injury, they often what what they would call fail. And that is not a, a good situation. My son tried his hardest to do what was expected of him, but because our expectations and the expectations at school and friends and family and, and, and employment were, were that of uh, a person without a brain injury, he experienced more failures in his uh, in his in a week, for instance, than we would in our lifetime, and and it's really, um, it's really just horrible to see. So, if we can diagnose or if we can identify, uh, we may be able to prevent subsequent affected births. For instance, if you're a midwife listening to this, and you suspect that. Um, a child has this condition, you can identify the history, you can identify the, um, uh, for instance, somebody with FASD is likely to uh, have been small at birth, um, have poor sucking reflex, um, find um, settling very difficult, may, uh, may appear to have a hearing problem, um, may have any number of um, problems as a child, um, including behavioural problems, um, not meeting milestones, um, sensory problems where um, they find a, a touch like a hit or the, the fabric of a particular item they won't be able to tolerate because of their sensory issues. Um, so all of these things, if you can identify them, then we can put into place or you can put into place things that are going to support them and help them. So uh, that is this very succinct and very brief overview of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Uh, have a look at the other conditions or the other presentations and the other aspects of the conditions in my other presentations. Uh, if you need any support, my email address is elizabeth at rffada.org, uh, F for Fred, um, or you can uh, ring 1800 RFFADA. If you would like some um, professional training on this condition, um, the RFFA has developed training which is currently being delivered by Training Connections Australia, and um, their uh, contact details are on the RFFADA website. So um, that's it. Thank you very much and uh, please contact us if you need support or help. Thank you.